It's Wednesday, September 16th, 2020. I'm Greg Nibbler, and this is Digital Trends Live. Yes, indeed. Hello, everyone. This is Digital Trends Live. I'm Greg Nibbler, and thanks for joining us wherever you are. We appreciate it. We broadcast live here every single weekday, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, bringing you trending tech headlines, news, interviews, discussions, and more. So hit that subscribe button and join the show. Let's get started off with some news, though. Apple, on Tuesday, unveiled a few new products, including two new Apple Watches and two new iPads, for which we have the complete information for at digitaltrends.com. However, the response to the iOS 14 update and toward its Apple One service bundle has received a bit of a backlash from two very different groups. The iOS 14 updates are rolling out today. This is great for end users because you get to see new features and new look, and developers can utilize those to create unique experiences within their apps. However, developers apparently only received 24 hours notice that the update was rolling out. And since developers usually get a week to work on their apps before an update rolls out, that's left a lot of them very unhappy as they have voiced repeatedly on Twitter. So don't be surprised if some of your apps are a little wonky for you. If you update iOS 14, it's not necessarily the app developer's fault. Now, as for Apple One, it's a new subscription service that bundles things like Apple Music, Apple TV+, Plus, Apple Arcade, and others all together for a lower price. Well, Spotify has made a statement in response to Apple One accusing Apple of anti-competitive behavior and asking for governmental regulators to investigate their practices, essentially saying the bundles favor Apple products over competitors in the App Store. Apple, of course, disagrees, and this adds to a number of anti-competitive claims that it is already battling. You can read more about all of this and, of course, the products themselves at digitaltrends.com. As we head toward the U.S. election, which is under two months away, social media platforms continue to battle misinformation campaigns. The latest comes from a report in the Washington Post regarding a group called Turning Point Action and their behavior on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So what's different about this group is that it's not your typical bot army. Instead, it's a pro-Trump organization attempting to skirt algorithms that identify repeated posts, like you would see on Facebook and Twitter, where they are clearly copied and pasted bot army behavior. But instead, they are paying teenagers from Arizona to post from their own accounts. So Turning Point Action would direct these teenagers where to go online and where to comment. They would then post false information, such as discrediting coronavirus numbers or anti-Dr. Fauci messages or making blatantly erroneous claims about ballots going missing. But to avoid detection by Facebook and Twitter, Turning Point would provide a shared online document to copy messaging from, then tell the teenagers to edit the beginning and ending of the message so as to avoid spam detection by Twitter and Facebook. In total, the Washington Post says this campaign was going on for months and generated thousands of posts on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram before being uncovered. Now, all of the sites are removing accounts as they discover involvement, but it's clearly just the tip of the iceberg as far as what went on. So we're going to be seeing a lot more from this. It's definitely an interesting look at how in-depth misinformation campaigns are right now. I suggest reading the entire article at the Washington Post. After Xbox gave us the pricing, pre-sale, and release dates for their upcoming consoles, it's now Sony's turn as they have an event today, September 16th at 1 p.m. Pacific. So, what do we know so far? Well, like the Xbox, we know there's at least two different versions of the PlayStation 5. There's the standard version and an all-digital PS5. We know what they look like. We know there are new controllers. We know that the PS5 will use AMD chips and be able to support 3D audio, 8K graphics, and ray tracing. So, what do we want to see today? Pricing and release date. That's what we should be getting from this event for sure, since Xbox is already ahead of the game on that. What we're hoping for is to also learn more about what games will be available for the launch, whether it's first party or third party games. Could we see more of the Spider-Man spinoff featuring Miles Morales? Possibly. But could Sony go through all of this trouble and then show us basically nothing? Possibly. However, we'll be restreaming the event right here and providing analysis and reaction as soon as any information is released. So hit subscribe and read up on the PS5 before it all happens right there at digitaltrends.com. If you want to be one of the first people in the world to fly in an all-electric vertical takeoff and landing air taxi, you can put your deposit down now, but it's kind of expensive and you might have to wait a few years. So Volocopter is a German startup scheduled to go public in 2022, but they've been making news in the air taxi realm for a few years now with their vehicle tests and their overall goal of establishing landing pads, or as they call them, voloports, that could be built on top of existing buildings in cities. The Volocopter vehicle itself is called the 2X, and it kind of looks like a helicopter with 18 rotors on it and a battery that provides a flight time of about 30 minutes or 17 miles. It's designed to carry one passenger at a time who would be able to essentially skip over 
over the traffic across town. As far as registering for the flights, you can reserve yours now for the price of 300 euros or about 350 bucks for a 15 minute flight. So it's not the most economical option, but there are only 1,000 pre sale registrations available. As far as when and where you get to fly, the company thinks it's going to be two to three years, and they don't know which cities will have volocopters to start with, although they've said they are talking to a lot of municipalities. Seems like mostly a bragging right of sorts right now, but you can read more about it at digitaltrends.com. All right, we do keep you up to date on all kinds of different things here at Digital Trends, and that includes products like headphones. And to talk about that, we've got Jaron Schneider. So let's go ahead and go to him right now. He's going to be talking about this for you. I personally love over-ear headphones. I use them when I'm sitting at my desk working. And in the last year, we've seen several new entries. Here are five of the most interesting of the group. Let's start with the Jabra Elite 45H headphones, which have surprising value for their affordability. They sound really good, something we've come to expect from Jabra, and have a ton of features like Bluetooth multipoint, which is something we're not seeing in headphones two or three times the price. They are extremely lightweight, easy to carry around, and they feel robust even though they are very light. So I wouldn't worry too much about breaking them. The best part about these is, they're very affordable. I do need to point out something insanely good about these Jabra 45Hs, the battery life. They last for a crazy 45 hours between charges. That's the best we've seen in quite a while and easily the best at their price point. They're also really comfortable because they rest on your ears very gently. A side effect of that is though, don't expect to take these out running with you or going to the gym. They have a tendency to slip off your head. But if you can deal with that, these sound fantastic and are a great value. Next, I want to talk about Razer, a company who you probably know more for making computers, but also makes headphones. These ones are called the Razer Opus, and they are value rich with a ton of features that you usually have to pay a lot more for. These are very comfortable, they sound great, and they have features like proximity sensors, so they know when you take them off your head, they'll automatically pause and then they'll resume playing when you put them back on. Additionally, these are some of the only headsets you can buy that are THX audio certified, so you know the audio sounds great. That's the entire point of these. Additionally, they have really good active noise cancellation, better than we were expecting to find in a brand like Razer. These have about 25 hours of battery life, which is average. It's good, it's not fantastic, but it'll last more than a day. The only other thing I feel like we need to mention about these is they don't use the most current Bluetooth technology, which is Bluetooth 5. These use an outdated Bluetooth 4.2 system, and while that's probably going to be okay with you, it does limit their range. We can't have a headphone video without talking about the best headphones repeatedly year over year, and that's the Sony WH-1000 XM4s. The XM3s were on our list of best headphones for something like three years, and the XM4s improved upon what were already the best on the market. Sony adjusted the headband so that they're more comfortable and can be worn for longer without feeling fatigue from them. They added more features to these, such as the proximity sensor. Now they know when you pull them off and put them back on and will pause and play music accordingly. They have excellent active noise cancellation. They didn't really improve that over the XM3s, but that doesn't really matter because they were already fantastic. Not only are these the most feature-rich headphones we have ever tested, they sound really good too. There's really nothing bad I can say about these. They're easily the best headphones of this style that you can find on the market. What if all you care about is even, equal balanced, perfect audio. Most of these headsets will provide some kind of special sound signature that the company puts in, but what if you don't want any of that? Well, then I have the perfect headphones for you. These are the Vmoda M200s. These are what are called studio monitors. Their entire purpose is to provide sound to you exactly as the studio would have wanted you to hear it. They don't have a ton of features. They are simply headphones. They don't have Bluetooth. You have to plug them directly into whatever source you want to listen to. But if you want crystal clear, surgically precise audio reproduction, it's really hard to get that for less than $500. These come in at significantly less than that and sound fantastic. Additionally, for you crazy audiophiles out there, you know what balanced audio is. These provide it. They have two ports. One is for the typical traditional audio signal. The other one is balanced. And that is very nice for those of you working in studios. It also comes with both a balanced cable as well as a regular three and a half millimeter jack with a microphone on there if you want to use these for 
phone calls. One of the major selling points of the M200s is that you can customize them. On each side, there are these, what on this one, are just black plates, but they come off and can be replaced with any number of plates provided by Vmoda. You can also do your own custom plates through them where they'll do etchings and colors. There's a ton of options and you can make these look really cool. They sound fantastic and are some of the best studio monitors you can get for the price. What if all you care about is comfort? Like these just have to feel good and you have to feel good while wearing them. That's where Mont Blanc, a company known for making watches and fountain pens comes in. Yeah, Mont Blanc's not an audio company, but they did make headphones and they partnered with Audiz's founder, Alex Rosen, to make them. So they actually sound very good. The thing is, that's not where these things are best. They look really nice and they feel even better. If all you care about is making sure that your ears are bathed in luxury, then yeah, you want these. On top of that, they have really great controls, a ton of features that work pretty well, and they have active noise canceling. The thing is, the battery's not great. They only last about 20 hours, but you know, 20 hours on an airplane have never felt better. And welcome back to Digital Trends Live. I'm Greg Nibbler, and again, thanks for joining us wherever you are. We appreciate it. You know our next guest from her starring role in MTV's Team Wolf, among many other films and TV shows, and she's now in the new movie No Escape, which follows a tale of social media and an escape room that goes completely wrong. It's out on demand and digital on September 18th. We're now joined by Holland Roden. Hello, Holland. Hi, guys. How are you? Doing great. A uh, lot to ask you about. Big fan of uh, a lot of things that you were doing, but I wanted to ask you this here. First, uh, for this movie in particular, had you ever been in an escape room before? I'm a huge fan of escape rooms. Uh, actually, my mom and my best friend and her mom went to uh, Vienna, Austria a few years ago where escape rooms apparently started. And so I've always had my last birthday in an escape room. Um, I think it's a great way for friends to get together and have a different way of building a friendship, uh, problem, sol problem solving things you would not usually problem solve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there a dream theme for an escape room that you'd like? There was one for my birthday last year that was a camping one, and we were all stuck in this um, this this lake house, and every puzzle had to do with how you would actually get out of a lake house. And so there were like coordinates of the lake, and something was hidden at the bottom of the lake, and um, there would be like an attic or a basement. Everything was really well integrated. I did this one in Dallas, Texas. Um, to how you would actually escape from the lake house and get out back to civilization. So it was it was really well thought out. I love that concept, actually. That, that sounds like a great one. Um, something else to act, ask you about, you know, with this movie, with No Escape, and talking about social media, and just, you know, it's really pertinent when this is coming out. Uh, but with social media for yourself, you know, you have huge followings on Instagram and YouTube, and without giving away a spoiler on the movie, can you relay maybe a time that social media went wrong for you? Really name any particular time, but I think that um, in this day and age where everyone has their own news outlet that is their social media platform, um, be it uh, someone who has a following or a fan that can gain traction with a rumor that's not true, I think those are dangerous uh, tools to have in a toolbox that are um, the game of telephone and the game of rumors is, is pretty horrific and can cause a lot of damage. I can only imagine, especially with, you know, your stature and your followers that you've encountered some things like that. Um, switching gears, 
to something else. Uh, this is what I, I'm really excited to talk to you about. You have a series called Welcome to Holland Days, uh, where you launched this during the pandemic. The plan is to build this van to travel yeah. and, and live in it, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, what inspired you to do that? And what are you most excited about when it comes to living on the road in a van? Well, I this has been a dream of mine for like three years. I uh, It takes a lot of resources and it takes a lot of van lifers who usually build their own vans uh, to not be van lifing and quarantine was the perfect time for me to reach out to some of my favorite builds and thankfully my very first one uh, Steve Mivis he's at free tire on Instagram he's an engineer he's a builder and he and his best friend his best friend's wife who are also engineers and builders um, have been teaching me how to use table saws and circ saws and multi-tools and part of me wants to just learn a new skill and be more self-reliant uh, is why I wanted to be a part of it. And then why I wanted to build a van is it just gives you a, a, an amount of freedom that's obviously not possible living in a stationary house. And with uh, auditioning so much virtually, even prior to COVID, and now certainly after COVID, essentially, you know, 100% virtually, why, you know, I love traveling and I haven't done a lot of it in my own backyard as far as national parks and Mexico and Canada and Alaska. So why not, um, you know, why can't you do the two for one. And and that was really my goal is since Team Wolf ended, I've been in Los Angeles auditioning and working and haven't had a lot of um, freedom. And so this, this allowed me that freedom. A hundred percent. I mean, I think it's something that a lot of people would want to do, but it's, it's a bold move to actually go it's do it. Uh, one of the questions that I had, right? I, I mean, yeah. that, it takes a lot. Like what's, what's one of the biggest obstacles you're afraid of, of being in the van? The toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, I would say, um, you know, it's possible. It's pretty. Technology is amazing, uh, you know, amazing thing. And these are not these are not easy builds. Um, I am putting a kitchen, a two burner stove. I have a, a composting toilet. I have a shower. Um, I have a recirculating shower being put in. So these are really uh, entire houses that are built on top of each other within sixty square feet. So you have to like small spaces, which I don't mind small spaces. Um, you have to be willing to learn different ways of keeping up with our bodily systems that we're not used to doing in, 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 in normal homes. Um, and that's, you know, a bit of a learning curve, but other than that, building your own home, there's nothing like it. Like there's no other feeling I can, um, compare it to. And, uh, yeah, it's a bold move, but it was a move that I, I had like a dying urge to do. I, I acting, getting my dog in this have been like my three big, I have to do this. I just have to. Um, so I may, I, we're not done with construction yet, but I am more in love with the, the house than I ever thought I could be. Well, I mean, and following along too, with your series of how you're doing it, you are incorporating, um, so a lot of technology into this as well, including one where you just put in a Tesla battery into the Sprinter van, which is, which is brilliant. And I highly encourage everybody to go check out that obstacle or check out that, that episode, excuse me. Um, with that, as far as the tech side of things, what are you most excited to incorporate into this van? Oh gosh, the recirculating shower is a pretty big deal. And then I am in a 144, which I purely did because of Los Angeles. Um, fitting in a normal parking spot's a big deal to me. If I had been in more of a rural community all the time, I probably would have gotten a 170 because 144 is really tiny to fit everything. And uh, the recirculating shower is pretty cool. And I have a waterproof floor. Um, and so how the toilet, the sink and the recirculating shower all kind of sit on top of each other and then kind of expand out to their own things, I think was an ingenious idea and fitting 520 amp hour battery, uh, and 640 Watts of solar with a 40 gallon water tank in a 144. I have not seen done personally yet out of all the hundreds of van builds I've looked at. So, um, I can, I am not the genius behind this idea. Steve Mivas is, and he deserves all the credit. Just a, a couple more quick questions, and I want to remind everybody, too, of when your movie is out and to go watch that. But I did have this question. Um, it's just, yeah. uh, which one would you want to do and why? If you come down to space travel or time travel, which one would you want to do and why would you want to do it? Well, if you believe in certain multiverses in quantum theory, you can do both. <laughs> That's a or great mold. answer. <laughs> Space and time. Uh, uh, if you could time travel, which which era would you go to? As much as I would want to go to the past, I'd probably go to the future. Yeah. Yeah. 
I go. To, I would go to any time, at least hundred plus years, but any time in the future. Nice. Yeah. Well, I want to remind everybody too that No Escape is out September 18th. It's on demand and digital. Um, what's one of your favorite memories from filming this movie to let everybody know about it? I just love how realistic it could be. I think that in the day and age of when you ask kids, I think it's like ages 18, 8 to 14, they want to be YouTubers. It's the number one profession uh, in 2020. And I uh, love that this was this shock and awe YouTube influencer that is trying to do always raise the bar and this could happen you could you could bring a group of friends to a, a country where kind of anything goes and and watch this unfold on camera we've seen things like uh oh gosh the cat the cat documentary you know where this facebook group on netflix followed this guy doing horrific things and so if people like horror this is a very realistic foray into it and uh I think Will did a great job of making that feel really real because I think it could be real. And uh, it's a great group to work with. Will's lovely. He stays so calm, cool, and collected uh, with a lot of balls that he's juggling at once. And so I just had a lovely time on the project. And uh, I I think it's a creepy... The, the, the more real horror can be, the creepier it is. And so, in my opinion, it's a pretty real story. I agree. Yeah, the the closer to to something reality, especially with this right now, you're right. You could almost see something like this happening. So that does add to the horror aspect of it, which makes it a great movie. And that's why I want to remind everybody: No Escape out on digital, on digital, and on demand on September 18th. And Holland, thank you so much for joining us, for being here yeah. with us. Appreciate it a lot. Congratulations on what you're doing. Excited to see when you get the van done and when you're out on the road. Uh, maybe you should uh, call in here to the show. That'd be awesome if you wanted yeah, to during uh, when you're out there. But. For sure. Yeah. That, that'd be great. All right, Holland, thank you so much for being here on Digital Trends Live. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. And again, no escape out on demand and digital on September 18th. So make sure you check that out. We'll be right back after this with more Digital Trends Live. This is Digital Trends Live. I'm Greg Nibbler. Thanks for joining us wherever you are. We do appreciate it. We broadcast live here every weekday. It is Wednesday, which means it's time for TBD. What is that about? I don't know. Let's find out together. Let's uh, introduce our hosts. We've got Adrian Warner and Jess Serbaugh. Jess, we'll go to you first. Hello. How are you doing? Oh, hello there, Gregory. I'm <laughs> lovely. How are you doing? <laughs> I am doing excellent. Uh, we have Jess Serbaugh and, of course, Adrian Warner. Hello, Adrian. Hello, Greg. Happy Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so, Adrian, TBD, what are we talking about today? Well, today's episode is called Television's Big Day because we're going to be talking about the 72nd Annual Emmy Awards, which is going to be coming up this Sunday, September 20th. So I have to ask you, Greg, are you planning on watching the Emmys this year? Um, well, I just found out when they were, but yeah, I mean, I, I might actually watch the <laughs> Emmys this year. <laughs> You've been interviewing so many awesome and amazing, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, talented yeah, I kinda, actors. I, I probably I should have known you'd about tune this. In. Yeah, should see. <laughs> well, <laughs> like I said, it's going to be on uh, this coming Sunday, September 20th. And I know I feel like a broken record. I feel like I say this every episode. But obviously, this year is going to look a lot different than previous years with COVID in play. Uh, awards have really been taken for quite a ride. So this, this year, you know, they're going to be doing it live 
5th, but they're going to be doing it remotely from around the world. Jimmy Kimmel is going to be doing the hosting this year, and the main event will be taking place in downtown LA in the Staples Center, but none of the audience or the nominees are going to be present. So this is going to be a huge feat of live streaming. The production crew will be dispatching rigs and kits uh, to more than 130 locations around the world to the various nominees, which is going to be really fun because that means the nominees will be able to present themselves in their homes or wherever they're streaming from, however they would like in front of this worldwide audience. So, you know, I expect to see a couple hijinks, especially from a lot of like the, the comedy uh, nominees. <laughs> so it'll be up to them. It'll be fun to watch. Um, also of historic note, this is the first year that the Emmys have a black producer, uh, executive producer Reginald Hudlin noted that he was really inspired this year by uh, the DNC and all of the other conventions that have been taking place remotely. So he's really excited and, um, you know, really paying attention to both the quality, the sound of how they're broadcasting from people's homes. In an interview in an LA Times that came out yesterday, he said, we're not making the Zoomies, we're making the Emmys. So this is gonna be a really big event. Um, how can you tune in? There's a couple of different ways for people who have network television at home. You could tune in on ABC at 5 p.m. Uh, East, uh, for, sorry, 5 p.m. Pacific or 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, for cord cutters like myself, there's a couple options. You have Hulu Plus Live, you have AT&T TV Now, uh, YouTube Live. Those are all streaming options. They're not free, but they do have free trials. So you can sign up for a free trial and tune into the Emmys. Uh, like I said, this should be really fun to watch with everybody kind of being in their homes and you getting to see what these celebrities, uh, you know, yeah. are up to there. So I'm definitely going to try and tune in. Um, but to talk a little bit more about who is nominated and what we have to look forward to, I'm going to hand it over to Miss Serba. Thanks, Adrian. So first of all, I have to mention, I read a quote from Reginald um, in the LA Times. They asked him if any of the celebrities were kind of hesitant at all about kind of setting up like the broadcast rigs and going live from their homes, anything like that. And he said, yeah, you know, there are some people out there who are like, and I quote, uh, we're hermetically sealed. We're not doing it. Um, <laughs> and, and he goes on to say then, too, there are people that are like, well, we're based in the UK. It'll be 4 a.m. So we'll be sleeping. And he's like, well, really? Like, really? So wake up. Uh, and I just I thought that was <laughs> I thought that was so amusing. You know, like I understand and completely respect being, you know, down to earth uh, and not consumed by fame. But like it's a historical broadcast of this incredibly prestigious award show where you may win and be honored uh, and for the first time have the freedom to actually accept the award in any manner you so choose. Um, and then that's your reaction. Like, come on. Um, <laughs> Anyway, rant over. But only the shows that aired uh, between June 1st, 2019 and May 31st, 2020 are eligible to contend, which is interesting because that actually had unexpected consequences for several series uh, when production had to shut down um, because it got ended up getting pushed due to quarantine. However, uh, Netflix earned the most overall nominations while HBO earned the most noms for a single series with 26 for Watchmen. Um, and since both of last, year, last year's big winners, Fleabag and Game of Thrones, won for their final seasons, uh, many of the big categories are much more wide open than they've been in the recent past. So, you know, there are so many different categories, so many different nominations. Uh, so I just grabbed two of my favorites to kind of chat about. Um, first up, let's look at Outstanding Comedy Series. Um, Let's face it, we're all rooting for Shit's Creek. Uh, the Canadian comedy was a yeah. bit of a Cinderella story in a lot of ways. You know, it arrived through an obscure service pop uh, to later be picked up by Netflix. And it was mostly ignored by the Academy up until that Netflix point, after which it has been lauded for its final two seasons. And the show, you know, which aired its series finale earlier this year, received 15 Emmy nominations. Uh, the series is nominated in the comedy series categories of Outstanding Lead Actor for Eugene Levy, Outstanding Lead Actress for Catherine O'Hara, Outstanding Supporting Actor for Dan Levy, Outstanding Supporting Actress for Annie uh, Murphy, with Dan also receiving directing and writing nods. So, you know, everyone's involved. And I, I will note that the Marvelous Ms. Maisel will attempt to come back for its, after its title this year, uh, after it was defeated last year by Fleabag so it is another really tight contender um but if it's not going to be Schitt's Creek uh I'm team what we do in the shadows for sure uh that's my yeah. underdog <laughs> I was gonna say and I'm positive that you both agree am I right assuming <laughs> you're right yes. yeah. it's All a right. regular human show <laughs> there it is 
<laughs> so next up, let's talk about Outstanding Limited Series. And let's just say it, Watchmen, Watchmen, Watchmen. It's all about Watchmen. Um, in case you've somehow missed it, inspired by the graphic novel of the same name, Watchmen explores an alternate reality where mass vigilantes are hunted as criminals, uh, and it tackles issues of terrorism, police brutality, and racism. Um, it's seen as a bit of a hybrid between the original comic series and then executive producer Damon Lindelof's unique kind of creative vision of a storyline. It's been a complete hit. In, fan, in fact, fans are you know begging for a second season. But Damon straight up told Entertainment Weekly, like, I can't say that there definitely won't be, but I can't say there definitely will be a second season. And he's actually mentioned several times that he would love to see a Watchmen season two as written by someone else. So who knows on that one? Um, but as far as the Emmys go, Rolling Stone's chief TV critic, Alan Steppenwall, said it best, I think. Um, he And I quote, uh, in taking a revered and famously hard to adapt comic book and turning it into a commentary on white supremacy in America, Damon Lindelof and friends somehow predicted many of the terrible events that have happened in our world since the miniseries ended uh, and produced a show that should dominate the proceedings on Sunday night. So will he be right? Probably, but we shall see. Awesome. Yeah, Watchmen, definitely amazing. Two things. Daniel Levy should win anything he's in, 100% always. all the time. And Catherine always. O'Hara needs and, to uh, take that and, home. 100%. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I agree across the board. And uh, 130 different houses or whatever, I want to see all the celebrity houses. That's what. That's something else. I want to right. see something go wrong with that. So I'm excited about that part. Greg all right. wants to see uh, something go awesome. wrong. I mean, that's part of the fun of it. I mean, you got to have something. Uh, so, so the Emmy's taking place. Thank you. I know another part, though, of TBD is Kickstop It. What is our product today? Yes. Yeah, so our product, uh, you got to listen a little bit to, to understand because it's quite fun. Um, it's called the Kinetic Driver. So let's just listen to a little bit of the audio from the Kickstarter campaign to really get a sense of what it's about. Allow me to tell you why you don't need the kinetic driver. <laughs> it has a brass cylinder with a low CG. It creates a flywheel of freeze like this. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, so this is a, <laughs> some aggressive this is basically marketing a screwdriver? there. Screwdriver? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's basically a <laughs> screwdriver um, for low torque applications that you can spin and it will use the inertia of the spin to twist in the screw instead of you physically turning it a bunch of times. Um, kind of silly okay. in concept, but I think actually maybe quite useful for, you know, depending on its various application. It has a bunch of different tips you can swap out and things like that. I'm actually kind of into sure. this. <laughs> I mean, isn't this just a drill? It's a drill, but you don't have to plug it I in. Mean, How great is that? How many times do you reach for your drill and you're like, oh, I got to charge it? I mean, that happens to me all the uh, time, right? <laughs> yeah, Drilling every. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, uh, all right. So it's a so it's a drill, a hand drill that you don't have to turn over and over. Um, okay. More of a yeah, screwdriver. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, it's it's, it's a screwdriver, but it's working kind of like a drill. So you just have to spin it once, and then it does it for you. All right, yeah. so how, <laughs> I mean, it looks I, cool, I guess. I'll give it that. I like their um, their reverse psychology marketing. I, I appreciate that. They're like, Here, let us tell you why we yeah. do not, why you don't need this. And uh, uh, maybe it means I need it. I don't know. It's non-corrosive, so which I are also they? like. <laughs> well, on Kickstarter, you can uh, back it for 75 euros and you'll get one of these with all of the different tips <laughs> and the, the box. <laughs> $75 for a screwdriver. 75 euros. So like, that's probably what, like in You're, the nine, like $90 or so, under bucks. 90 bucks, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, think about wow. it. Maybe this is the one screwdriver you need to roll them all. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think I already know where I'm going. Price alone on that. I can buy like 50 screwdrivers for that much. But uh, all right, Jess, for you, kickstart it or kickstop it? This is a kick for me. It's, it's, I can see how some people would find another, like a gadget like this interesting that, you know, potentially is using it all the time. Um, again, I like their aggressive and reverse psychology marketing. It's a kick. Yeah, I can take it or leave it. Okay. Adrian Warner. 
<laughs> I'm going to kick start it uh, because A, I like the design and B, because I have terrible grip <laughs> and I feel like not yeah. twisting something over and over would be really great. Uh, <laughs> but I, so. I do agree on the price point and it's not like I'm replacing my screwdrivers that often. Like, let's be real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, if I could get it for like five bucks, then I'm in for it. But um, 70 euros, it is made in Italy. I am a hard kick on that hard pass. I'm going to make one that's like half the price and then try to go after him for that. Um, so I'm kicking it. That's two kicks and a kick start. I think that's the first time we haven't all matched for a couple of weeks. So there it is. Awesome. And uh, what other thing, of course, always for TBD, we've got some Charlie Cam. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we've got we him do. making his little nest over there going quite aggressive <laughs> on <laughs> making the bed. <laughs> Needing Nothing some is right with this. I've got to fix Nothing this. Nothing is right. <laughs> oh. Charlie's the only one <laughs> who can mess. make it comfortable. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, God. His little loafy body. All right. The best. It's Listen. quite fantastic. Oh, nope. Not ready yet. Okay. Nope. Not ready nope. yet. That's <laughs> why he, like, noticed me halfway oh. through. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then shunned me. Leave me, me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, Adrian, Jess, as always, fantastic TBD every Wednesday. Um, you two are awesome, and I will talk to you both soon. Awesome. Thanks, Aww. Greg. You're awesome too, Greg. <laughs> thank you. Um, all right. That's how I'm introing every show from now on with that voice. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in to Digital Dreads Live. We appreciate it so much. Hit that subscribe button, share the show. I'll let you know this. We're going to be rebroadcasting the PlayStation 5 events at 1 p.m. Pacific today. So follow along. Will we get a price? I don't know. It's Sony. Maybe not. But either way, it'll be interesting. So that's going to be happening. So watch along on whatever channel you're watching now. Tomorrow, um, let's see. We've got uh, the debut of Mike Artizone, who's going to be here on the show talking about the PlayStation 5, kind of recapping that. Zone will be here. Uh, we've also got Rick Marshall uh, for Real News. So talking about everything that's streaming. All that here every single day, plus all your tech news, plus interviews, everything you need. So follow along, hit subscribe, share the show. I'm Greg Nibbler. I'll see you right back here tomorrow for another edition of Digital Trends Live.